Now that we're warmed up, we'll continue our movie-themed sermons today with a story familiar with everyone here. How many of you have watched The Wizard of Oz? Is there anyone who hasn't? Oh, okay, great. <laughs> the Wizard of Oz was released in August of 1939 and was an instant success. It's been replayed at least annually since the early 60s and its popularity is undiminished. I'm not going to recount all the details of the story. Instead, I want to discuss the themes and the lessons that parallel our own lives and look at guidance the Bible gives us for approaching and facing adversity in life. We'll be looking at the themes of this story in two parts. This afternoon, we'll focus on facing adversity and tomorrow's morning's worship service will address finding our way back home. So let's start at the beginning of the story. As the movie begins, we find a young girl, Dorothy, who's already experienced huge adversity in her life. We're not given the background story, however, we quickly realize that Dorothy lives not with her parents, but with her kindly aunt and uncle. Are her parents alive? Was she orphaned? What happened and when? Does she remember a life prior to living with her aunt and uncle? Dorothy's signature song captures the mood of the film and links all the themes seen throughout. To set the mood, Cindy Seastrom will now sing this classic song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. <laughs> Heard of 
Sunday. Regardless of her past, Dorothy's current problems are just beginning. Her closest companion, Togo, her dog, has been taken from her, not to be returned. As we'll see in this scene. Like many of us, Dorothy's initial reaction is to run away. First Corinthians chapter 13. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned as a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. The words of Paul. Now, Dorothy has an excuse. She is a child. How many of us try to run away when storm clouds gather? But what does running away look like for us? How do we deny or avoid our own problems? But before Dorothy's problem is resolved, the most dramatic event of the movie happens.
Though this scene depicts a disaster in a lighthearted manner, change of this degree is difficult for most of us. Dorothy shows an unusual resilience, hence she is the hero of this tale, but back to the relevance in our lives. How often have you been faced with a series of adversities? Just when you're unsure if you can manage the stress of your current problems, a major catastrophe occurs. Dorothy's world is turned upside down, instantly altered to the point of fear and confusion. The tornado ripped Dorothy from her home, though not from her house, and she found herself in a strange and dangerous world that she had never known. Person or is are so young that you've had to 
blessed life to this point, you have faced one or more tornadoes, some major, some minor, but life-altering nonetheless. If you're having difficulty recalling your tornadoes, just ask yourself this question. What events have happened in my life after which everything changed? To be sure, many of those events are happy ones. Weddings, births, graduations, promotions, and the like, but the dark ones likely point to our personal tornadoes. Deaths, divorces, medical diagnoses, losing a job, foreclosure, you get the point. At those moments, once we are able to gather our wits after the initial shock, we become painfully aware that the world has changed. The old order is passed and we are entering a new landscape where there's no longer normalcy. That which was unthinkable has come to be. That which happens to others has now happened to us. In those moments we understand the words of our Savior Jesus Christ when on the cross he cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Human reaction to major tornadoes varies. Some people become numb, some collapse into inescapable grief. Some become angry and lash out. Some dissociate and behave as though nothing has happened or delve into compulsive tasks. Though the Word of God can be comforting in these times of adversity, we must be cautious to avoid trite phrases that may hold truth but for which the recipient is not yet ready. Do we try to comfort with these phrases? It's God's will. Time heals all. God's plan is a mystery to man. You'll get through this. Pray for comfort. They're in a better place. It'll all work out. Timing can be everything. Sometimes the most comfort is as simple as saying, I'm sorry, I'm here for you, I care for you, can I help you in any way, or just a hug. The Bible gives guidance for those experiencing stress and grief and also for those in a position to provide support. Most of us are familiar with the usual verses of comfort, but here are a few well-known but a few less well-known verses. I find related to this issue. First Peter, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. In Matthew 11, Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Letter to Galatians, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And from Paul's letter, second letter of the Corinthians, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Notice that we are implored to pass it on. We've been given comfort by God in order to have the strength and wisdom to be a comfort to others. Consider how others have comforted you in difficult situations. I've come to understand that the central theme of Christian morality is to pass it on. But that's a whole other subject. How can we become better as a congregation in order to support and comfort those in the aftermath of their personal tornadoes. What can we do? What's the right thing to do? Are we aligned and organized in ways that provide for our tornado victims? Have we defined those in need too narrowly and therefore missing opportunities to fulfill Christ's commandments? These are all questions we should ponder, not just today, but ask ourselves periodically while we recall that we are all fallible. We all have blinders on. 
We all engage in denial at times. So, Dorothy's now on the path of discovery and challenge. She willingly accepts the challenge and thus begins her adventure. Tomorrow's sermon is entitled, Part Two, Finding Our Way Back Home. Now before 